Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick update on what Jordan and I have been working on this morning. I really wasn't feeling that good this morning. My allergies were kind of getting to me, so Jordan got started and went to the store, bought some lumber, and just went to town. So he's been working on the battery bank storage. So he's been building this platform, but he had to run to Home Depot because the circular saw we just bought, a Ryobi, of course, caught on fire and was smoking from the inside. So we're gonna see if we can return that. Anyways, by the time Jordan had gotten started on the battery platform. He pretty much was independent. So I was just kind of sitting around and I was feeling better. So I decided that I wanted to work on the shelving that we've talked about doing. I don't know if we've talked about it with you guys, but these PVC panels, they don't go all the way to the walling around the companionway. So we want to build some sort of shelving that can go here. So I'm working on that storage this morning. I templated out a couple pieces already. So I have this piece here, for example, we'll go right here. And then because there's like an angle in here, we can put in shelving. So I'm working on that now. For people that are not into the whole building and DIY thing, a two by four is commonly misconceived to be two inches. two inches by four inches, when in fact it is one and a half inches by three and a half inches. This is your beginner lesson. We'll show you more of Jordan's battery bank holder, battery platform, in a little bit, but I'm gonna cut another piece for that shelf. Alrighty, so there are the supports for the battery platform, all fiberglassed in, ready for the battery box to go on top of the platform. D wall. We got the pieces of the battery box cut, and we have extra epoxy prime coat that we use for the deck that we're going to actually paint the box with to completely waterproof it. We're using marine grade plywood as well. So this is just a little bit of an extra step to make sure that no water is gonna damage it. All right guys, so Jordan's in the boat working on the platform and battery bank and I decided to get back to my PVC shelving project. And I wanted to work on figuring out how I'm going to bond the pieces. A lot of you put in the comments using PVC cement, but my only experience had been with the colored types of PVC cement that leave a clear mark. So I didn't want to use that. And I ended up watching some videos on YouTube about how to join these PVC cement boards. And you guys were right. PVC cement is the way to go. And there's actually a heavy duty clear PVC cement that you can use for this. So I want to go ahead and give this a test. Now, I've already done this and I forgot to put the mic on. So I've done a couple test strips, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did that. So I have some extra PVC board here and I've taped off two sections that I'm going to try to bind together and see if this blue from the painter's tape comes off. And then I've got over here extra PVC board. You can see this is already bound, but I wanted to do another test and I only had one more piece. And I'm going to do this without painter's tape. So interestingly enough, this is actually the best test I've had. I've gotten better seams, less painter's tape residue on this one, and less residue at all on this one. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of the results. The three samples over here all were painter's taped, and these two seams here were actually without painter's tape. So the first one I did with the painter's tape was this one. And you can see I didn't put enough on, so there's not much of a bond, but there's just a little hint of blue on here. So the next time I did it, I put a little more on. It's still not a great bond, and there is still painter's tape residue here. This is the one I just filmed for you, and it has the best bond and probably the least amount of painter's tape. So I don't know, maybe using more PVC cement is better. Here was my first test without painter's tape. And as you can see, I had a lot of residue here and even still not a very good bond. So I'm not sure what happened here, but I, did, I was not happy with the seam at all. But now this time, what I just filmed for you guys, this is a really good seam and there's not a lot of residue. So it really is hit or miss. And I don't know what's best, if using painter's tape is best or if it's a waste of time, because that last seam looked really good. 
All right, Jordan is in the aftmost section of the lazarettes, working on his contortionist skills. Not as much room in here as I had hoped, but... Well, yeah, now with the battery bank in. It'd probably be easier to go into the cockpit, but it's too hot out there. <laughs> so it's worth destroying your ribcage, apparently. Yeah. Wasn't a good idea. All my life I've been waiting for a Tennessee Mountain Girl. Ah! That's gone. It's alright. Could be better. I think I am going to layer fiberglass right here. Just one. It'll strengthen it and make it like super durable. So last night we had some pretty significant rainfall and we had noticed before a little leak in the cockpit and we were trying to figure out where it was coming from. But last night during that downpour it was very evident that it was coming from the emergency tiller access in the cockpit. And so Jordan removed that this morning and the findings were not that great. Basically this area was leaking like a sieve. Now we know the core in the cockpit needs to be replaced so we're not really worried about that. We just need to seal this up for now. So we went and we bought this from West Marine. And surprisingly, something from West Marine wasn't that expensive. This was only $25. So it's got a new, it's got a good new gasket in it. And then we're gonna bed it with butyl tape right here. Since we're bedding it with butyl tape, once we recore the deck, we can reuse this. I was thinking about using the oscillating tool, but I just don't want to create that much dust. This really isn't working that badly. So I'll have this done in the next five to ten minutes. That's a healthy amount of butyl tape. We should have a lot of squeeze out, which is gonna be a good thing. Now let's screw it in place. Jordan is down below templating out a piece of marine plywood and we are trying to cut for you hit with the storm. This is gonna be kind of the underlayment, I guess, I don't know, for the Corian countertop that we're gonna be putting on. So you gotta put this three quarter inch plywood down as a support for the Corian. So we've made this template from what we have. So this is our this is our whole galley right here. And this is just gonna sit on top of the fiberglass supports and we're gonna shim it so that it's gonna be level again because right now it's not actually level. But right now it all starts with cutting this board before and that storm hits. This storm. So, it is looking pretty gnarly. Yeah, the, the funny thing about working in Florida in the summer is it's unbearably hot during the day, but then when it cools down, you have to beat the rain. <laughs> Lightning's getting a little too close for comfort, so we're gonna put the board away. We're gonna cut it when the rain's over. We are currently hiding in the boat. It is pouring out right now. We're like 99% certain the boat just got hit. Because I've it was, never heard lightning that close. And we've lived in Florida all our lives. It was like, there was no delay. It was, it was a, like the entire boat lit up with a huge flash and the thunder and just like instantaneous. boom instantaneous it wasn't like there wasn't a delay like there normally is and i'm pretty sure it was another boat that was near us that just got hit i mean if you think about it there's really not a lot around here and all of the masts are the know. tallest points yeah 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 that's scary luckily we don't have a mast right now <laughs> <laughs> so we're probably not going to get hit but someone Definitely else is pretty intense the storm. Someone else probably just got hit. So it's been raining for quite some time now and we got a little bit stir crazy so Jordan actually decided to go wash the boat in the rain. As you know from our previous video the water here it apparently has iron or something in it that's staining the deck so we thought washing it in rainwater would be better and since there's no more lightning it's not dangerous. So while he was doing that I decided to go ahead and template out around the companionway. We're going to end up doing that in PVC board, and now it's templated out. There's not really much else we can do in the rain, so we're just waiting for it to finally be done. The issue with finally rebuilding things is that everywhere gets a little bit smaller again. However, it looks, it looks pretty good. So, essentially what we did is this counter is now level. This is about how much off it was, about a half inch half inch to three quarters of an inch in the middle. Basically the counter originally went like this and it, and it had like a low point in the middle. I don't know why, it's just kind of Some people said probably so that water would drain into the sink, but the sink was an overmount sink, so it never would have worked. Probably. It never really would have worked. Yeah, I think it was just a flaw. So 
This is what we're doing to level it. And now we're basically going to put a ton of shims in here. And then another a 2x4 support right here to make sure that this counter stays where it is. And then this is basically the underlayment for the Corian countertop. So we're going to cut out the sink hole and the icebox hole out of this. And then we're going to put the Corian over it. We're also going to attempt Corian fiddles on the sides so they make it like it'll look like one nice solid surface. Last weekend we actually toured Island Packet where they where they built Island Packet yachts. Tate Marine, so they built Seaward, Island Packet, and Blue Jacket. Pretty cool yachts, but they use Corian for everything that they do. And they also have a Corian fiddle that they put on and it integrates with the counter. And if you know how to work with Corian properly, you should be able to basically glue that fiddle on, caulk it, sand it, and it should look like one piece. So that's, that's what we're gonna attempt to do. But anyway, it's nice to get this sub countertop, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's nice to get this plywood on and then we're gonna put the bulkhead in today as well. That'll close up this area a little bit more, which means that it'll get less hot in the middle of the day because our air conditioner, it's a 7,000 BTU air conditioner and it's struggling uh, because of all this open space. So we're gonna make this salon a lot smaller by doing this and hopefully it won't be 95 degrees in our boat in the middle of the day. We even added a little curtain the other day so that it would block off the V-berth. We got the curtain to block off the V-berth and then this plywood and you know panels are gonna close off the stern of our boat, so hopefully the only area that's being cooled is actually the salon right here. And maybe I'm shooting for 85 degrees <laughs> in the middle of the day. That would be Much nice. Much better than 95. Nice. Closing up the galley. It's exciting. So none of this is screwed in place, it's basically just put in there so that it will stand up, but we've got everything dry fitted and this is our new bulkhead and nav station. So you're just going to sit in it like here, we're going to put a cushion that you sit on and then you can use you know, this area or this area and then potentially have some kind of folding or maybe slide out tray in front of you. But yeah, it's a nice little protected nav station. There's going to be a screen right here with all the electronics basically repeated to, so that you can see it in the nav station so that when you're on watch, you can potentially sit down here when it's stormy outside and be nice and dry and comfortable. I'm even thinking about potentially putting a webcam on the front of the mast so that up here you can actually see what's in front of you without having to go above. However, That'd just be kind of a cool little feature because it's really not going to be hard to just be like sitting here on watch and then just being like, okay, let me take a look through the Dodger, you know, because we're we will have the Dodger there, so we'll be able to have the companionway open and we'll be able to kind of poke our head out there. But it would be kind of nice to be able to see what's in front of us without actually having to go outside. I just want them to admire your mad scientist hair. Mad <laughs> scientist hair. That's why I've been wearing a hat recently. I've been growing out my hair, so. <laughs> but my hair doesn't really look that good when it's this length. But I did tell everybody on the live stream, if, if we ever get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna shave my head bald, but until then, I'm not getting a haircut. <laughs> Randy's like shaking her head. No, I like long hair, but the 100,000 shaving the head, man. Yeah, dude. so I figured it would probably take years, so my hair is gonna be pretty long. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I love